Welcome to BitBoy Crypto. We can't let anybody else find out who we are. My eyes are up here. I personally would not advise that strategy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bugs Bunny or Tweety Bird? How to make money in crypto. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, the people's channel, home of the Bit Squad, the largest and greatest crypto community in all the interwebs. No channel works harder to keep you in the know about crypto. My name is Ben. We try to come to you every day live at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we have had some major technical difficulties this morning. Uh, my TV, where I look at myself, is not working. Uh, we have to get a replacement. We try to fill in, and it is also not working so I really don't even know how I'm going to do the show when I can't see myself uh, because that's what that's the motivation I usually need to keep going. So Yeah, we all know that's your uh, favorite part. Yeah. I also cannot see the screen on, you know, I can't see what the screen will look like. I can see my screen on my computer. But anyways, along in the short of it, I can't see the Twitch chat. I can see the YouTube chat, but it's like very small text, so I can barely see it too. But uh, I might... yeah, if you can increase the text size, that'd be great. So anyways, guys, we had some technical difficulties. Really sorry for being late today. Uh, we've done very good at being at least, you know, almost on time every day. But, you know, some days you have these technical difficulties. It is what it is. Today is Wednesday, the 22nd. Is that right? Today the 22nd? 23rd. Today is the 23rd. Oh, I thought he was supposed to fix that. Uh, he fixed the time. He didn't fix the date. So it is uh, Wednesday, March 23rd. Uh, like I said, it is about 11.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right now. 75 degrees here in the BitBoy Crypto Studio. Uh, so guys, the market feeling kind of, you know, still relatively bullish. Uh, we got some major stuff going on today. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at, uh, the markets. Of course, Frankie Candle will be joining us. Hope you guys enjoyed the nine o'clock video last night where we bought Frank on. And I will tell you this, we definitely will be doing night mode on that coin market cap oh, from here on out. Yeah. My, I, my eyes almost popped out of their head. Yeah. I, they, my eyes were bleeding for a little while. I put some drops in and recovered. Yeah, we'll try to make it. We will try our best. Yeah. Uh, so let's go. Ahead, let's just go ahead and dig in, guys, because we are a little bit late today. Um, here we are on BitBoyCrypto.com. We ticked back up. Thank God, 1.45 million life. subscribers. It looks like we're heading in the right direction in subscribers again. So um, you know, we've been making a lot of changes. Hope you guys have enjoyed the improved quality. It's going to be better. Uh, you know, once people do start coming back into uh, crypto. When Bitcoin's heading back to all-time highs, hopefully uh, we will be better than ever. Uh, yesterday, I discussed that we were going to put this tweet out, uh, and we want you guys to go and like and retweet it. Uh, so here it is. Good day, Yuga Labs. This is the team behind Board Apes and Crypto Punks. My team and I would love to discuss something with your team. We sent a DM and haven't got a response yet. We're big supporters, and we'd love to chat. BitSquad, help us by retweeting this, and let's get the conversation going. So I'm going to go ahead and tweet this. Wait. Oh. What? I was going to say. I'm going to do it. It might, yeah, it might be worth mentioning that we are board ape community members, crypto punk community members. You know, rather than just saying we, we're big fans. Yeah, sure. We're part of the community. We are holders of. Let's see. We are. We've been holders of a board ape yacht club. I'm just gonna say of a board ape of a board ape. Crypto Punk Except. and a Mebit. We have a we probably have a mutant too, but we don't have to put it all. I just wanted them to know we're part of the community. Yeah, sure. I'll put mutant. We we do have a mutant ape. We bought one yesterday, actually. Because Justin and DZ had one, but I didn't. So now I have one. Mm -hmm. So uh here we go. So here we go. So I tweeted this. So if you guys could please do us a favor. Number one, obviously, smash the like button for the video. Uh, we always try to bring you the highest quality crypto content out there on the interwebs. All you got to do is go over here to my profile. So I have Twitter blue, so it actually gives you like 30 seconds to think about whether or not you actually want to tweet it. I've been seeing that lately. It's funny. Yeah. You're like, are you sure you want to say <laughs> that? Well, the, the, I'll tell you the actual, actual frustrating thing about it. So here it is. Let's go ahead. Let's replace our Pluto Alliance. Let's pin this. Let's see. So it'll be pinned to the, ch to the top here so you guys can go and uh, like and retweet that, please. But uh, uh, what I was going to say was, is that um, the frustrating thing about that is if you start sending the tweet and then you leave Twitter before it fully goes through, like if you just click off the app, it won't send until you come back into Twitter. That is annoying. Yeah. 
Because, you know, usually when you're tweeting, like, you're tweeting, then you're putting it away or whatever. So, mm-hmm. all right, guys. So, there we go. We are 823,000 followers on Twitter. Do you know my – by the way, uh, our video yes that I posted of me doing 300, this was from a couple months ago. This was not this week, by the way. I have lost about 30 pounds, but my Mac – you know, my bench has not lost anything. Uh, but what I would tell you is this, is that can you believe how many views this video has? How many? Do you see it? Holy cow. Yeah, 254,000 views. Uh, and to all the people who are really low Q and bad at math, uh, that's 300 pounds. That's a 35 on the end. That's not a 25 for those douchers that are like, you're 400 pounds and you can only lift 275. 219. Actually, this morning, 218 pounds. So there you go. All right, moving on here. Uh, BitBoy Crypto here on um, uh, Instagram. Instagram 446,000 followers. Oh. Also, dad jokes for the win. Don't forget to follow me there. That's my personal account. If you want, let's, uh, you can pull up the Players Lounge uh, Instagram. They put a big post out last night. Did they? Up. Yeah, the LSU players that they've got in their launch. Look uh, at that. Yeah, it's pretty. Pretty cool. If you guys don't follow the Players Lounge, but highly recommend it. They've got a lot of really big stuff in the works. There we go. For uh, NFTs for NIL athletes. So that last post there is uh, highlighting a lot of the different ambassadors they have at um, LSU. So, yeah, check that out. Follow Players Lounge and uh, let us know what you think. Yeah. Um, And, uh, yeah, I mean, when are we going to talk about this? Uh, Soon. Not now. Not now. Okay. We got a lot more stuff coming with players. That, that, that's what we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tease for you guys. Um, so you guys make sure to follow them. Am I following them? I am. I am following them. Yeah. So perfect. All right. Let's go ahead and get started here on the markets for the day before we bring Frankie up here in a few minutes. Uh, we have the overall market. It's higher than yesterday. It was 193 trillion yesterday. Today it's 1.94 trillion. Uh, Bitcoin dominance. Look at that. Dropping like a rock down to 41.7%. 24 hour volume is down a little bit, but still okay at 91 billion. Uh, and it's going to cost you uh, 19 and a half pair of ways to send an ETH transaction. Looking at the price here, we got Bitcoin coming in at 42,686. It did peak, I think, at uh, it, uh, a little over 43, like maybe two days ago. We haven't gone back over there since. Up 5% for the week, but Ethereum holding steady yep. above $3,000. Finance coin up to 410. XRP still at 84 Look cents. Look at Cardano. Look at Cardano. Wow. Hey. No surprise, we do a video on it last night. It goes up 10%. You know, hey. I don't want to take too much credit for that, but our timing is good, right? Yeah. No, it, had, it had a good move up to like 89, 90 cents. It was kind of holding. And then uh, I think it moved up to 98 or something yesterday. Yeah. But, yeah, that looks good. I think XRP is about ripped through a dollar too. I, I think it's, if you remember, they generally move together. Mm-hmm. Like they tend to follow similar cycles. The price point is about the same. So look for that. Uh, Terra Luna up, Solana up, everything up. You know, it's a good day on the markets. Uh, 24 hours, we got Loop Ring up 34%. Now, if you remember, Loop Ring was crushing it before we started having major drops. Uh, so this is a good sign. Board Ape or uh, Ape Coin. 1,200% seven day. Yeah. I, I just can't decide what I want to do with this. Like, I was hoping it would drop down to 4 or $5 and we could get a position. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know where I stand on all this. We'll talk to Yuga Labs. I got some stuff for them. We'll, we'll, maybe we'll decide to go big into that right now. But we just, we got too many other coins we're trying to accumulate. We discovered doing this portfolio video, like we had not made this Terra Luna move. I thought that we, uh, that we did. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I know I didn't pump ADA, bud. I know that was a joke. <laughs> was that, a was, joke. that was a joke, fella. Um, but, uh, you know, we've only got like $67,000 worth of Luna. It's one of the smallest coins in our portfolio. And, uh, you know, it, <laughs> Rand, Rand's talking about getting his portfolio to 90%, Terra Luna. Oh, my goodness. I, don't, I think it was kind of a meme he was making, yeah. but, I mean, he's just saying, you know, definitely something you want to be big on. So, look it's, at these gainers for the week. Yeah, it's interesting when you're looking what they do, and I know there was – I saw some, care, uh, some, some comparisons this morning of Dai versus Luna yeah. and kind of what they have to spend to sustain the way – you know, the – trajectory that lunar's on now saying dies a lot more sustainable but we just won't know until we watch it play out you yeah. know so it's gonna be well it's definitely something we are gonna be accumulating more oh of, yeah so yeah how long have we been hodling xrp we really started at like getting serious xrp positions probably about a year and a half ago 
pretty much when the lawsuit yeah. started really driving the price down, that's when it yep. started to look more attractive. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So Bitcoin dips 3.6% from weekly highs. What are the key Bitcoin price levels to watch? Uh, it had a significant retracement overnight, uh, dropping all the way down below 41.8 to about 41.7. Um, it missed out on a very bullish daily close, which is fine, guys. We're not, guys, we're not looking for Bitcoin to go to $50,000 tomorrow, okay? We're, I'm very comfortable with where Bitcoin is right now, um, staying in this range between 41 and 43. And, um, you know, right now, the pair, at the time of this writing, it was $42,300, $1,000 from the highs where it went over forty three. dollars Now, a lot of this, something we haven't really talked about. And, I, DJ, I actually want to give you um, an opportunity to discuss this um, <clears throat> about Terra Luna and what they're doing by buying uh, $3 billion worth of Bitcoin. I think they're trying to accumulate $10 billion worth $10 billion, was the number yeah. they gave. Okay, can you talk a little bit about um, the... Uh, protocol accumulation we could be looking at? Yeah, uh, so something, this is something we were talking about a little over the weekend, and you're seeing yeah. a lot about it on Twitter. Lark tweeted about this protocol accumulation. As we're seeing in DeFi, you know, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat when it comes to stable coins. Yeah. We've, we're very familiar with Tether. We're very Crypto familiar. Kitty would have been better to say. Go ahead. Yeah, that would have been better to say. Uh, very familiar with uh, USDC, which are basically stable coins backed yep. by dollars. However, when a lot of people in this space don't necessarily want, you know, have long-term confidence in the buying power of the dollar due to all the geopolitical stuff going on, we're starting to see, and this, you know, to their credit, this was a lot of the ideas behind Diem when they first launched, yeah. immediately got struck down because of the threat it was to the dollar and since facebook so centralized and so dependent on the government and kind of closely tied with the government they immediately backed off when the you know lawmakers and policymakers said like ah we don't like this basket of asset things but that's something terra luna with ust their stable coin has started to do is have a stable coin that through the protocol, through you know DeFi and what they're doing, that's backed by a variety of different assets, real estate, Bitcoin, et cetera. Yeah. So now we're starting to see these protocols like Curve, like uh, Terra Luna, a lot of these big DeFi plays with all these assets in there that need to be placed. And through a DAO and through decentralized voting, if they come to a consensus that they want to hold Bitcoin as an asset, which a lot of people in this space it's, see as the hardest store of value and would like to have a stable coin backed by Bitcoin, they're voting for this. So that's what we're seeing with Terra Luna. Uh, Daquan, I know, did a big space. Yeah. I don't know if it happened over the weekend or if everybody was talking about it over the weekend. Maybe it was Friday, kind of outlining what Terra Luna was looking at doing through this mass accumulation. It's a big step. It's kind of, I, I wouldn't say it's the same, but I would say it kind of lends itself to like when El Salvador started adding Bitcoin to its balance sheet. It's not necessarily an immediate game changer, but it starts those dominoes falling. Well, like, hey, if this protocol is accumulating Bitcoin, why shouldn't Curve? Why shouldn't Aave? Why shouldn't some of these other protocols that have yeah. all these assets? So, you know, Terra Luna accumulating billion to dollars alone is some good buying pressure on it. Now, if you've got protocols doing it, nations doing it, billionaires doing it, it almost becomes a race to who can get the most Bitcoin the fastest. So yeah. it could be really it could be really big. big. I mean, you know, 2018, the narrative was wait for the institutions to come in. Well, now wait for, you know, the crypto market to pump itself. Right. <laughs> you know, wait for uh, a lot of these coins to come in by Bitcoin, which would have a positive effect on their ecosystems, but then a positive effect on the Bitcoin price, which would have a positive effect on the entire crypto market. So therefore, just by buying $10 billion worth of Bitcoin, they're, increasing their net worth in a lot of different ways, most likely. Um, not a guarantee to make the price go up, but I mean, if you buy $10 billion worth of Bitcoin, um, you know, if you're buying at least some part of that from exchanges and not all over the counter, then, uh, you know, you would see, you know, price go up. I mean, you would be removing $10 billion worth of liquidity from the market, whether it's OTC or whether it is, um, you know, uh, on exchanges. So, and I, I do want to mention, you know, speaking of Bitcoin, I, I was very proud of like Dan Held. I don't know if you saw what he said on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually said... Um, let's see if I pull up his tweet. I liked what he said. I, I, I really do about this issue. Um, he saw, is that another country bans themselves from Bitcoin? Who is that? I wonder. 
Let's see where it is. I will find it. I welcome all projects and protocols that want to build on Bitcoin, use Bitcoin. Excited to see what Stable Quan and the Terra community will do. Yeah. That's a positive thing. That's what we want. As opposed to a lot of those Bitcoin maximalists that are like, no, we don't want them buying Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. Speaking of Bitcoin maximalists, we will be attending Bitcoin 2022. Yeah. Um, so we'd love to talk to you guys down there. If you are down there, we're going to be you know busy doing all kinds of stuff for the week. And uh, I think we're going to be able to give away some passes for that. So if you are interested in going to the conference, stay tuned in the next few days. We'll have some uh, details on that as well. The tickets are very expensive. So yeah. um, if, if that was a deterrent for you going, maybe you live in the area or you, know, you can afford to go down there, you just can't afford to go to the conference, um, then you know, we'll have some opportunities, you know, hopefully in the next uh, week or so to uh, hook some of you guys up with that. But uh, we, we got something kind of big we're working on for maybe a sponsorship for something down there. It's so exciting. Also, just quick mention, they did say in the comments, with that big new move from Cardano, they did flip, you know, Solana and Terra, you know, so they've moved back into that seven position. Yeah, I did is, see that as well. Yeah. So uh, where it's conference is uh, Miami Convention Center. Uh, Bitcoin hits a potential price increase. Bloomberg, basically they're saying, you know, watch for Bitcoin to go to 45K. Come on up, Frank. All right. Frankie Candles. Bought, which this morning I discovered a song by Fat Joe, Busta Rhymes, and Styles P, a new song called Bing Bong. Uh-oh. And not only that, but in the song, Styles P talks about board apes and NFTs. Wow. I, I, want, to license, I want us to license that and make that uh, Frank's uh, theme song. <laughs> yes, that would be absolutely epic. Pretty good song, actually. It, uh, is pretty, it hits. Yeah, it does. It's, was, it's was, a slapper. Yeah. It's a slapper for sure. I mean, who doesn't love Fat Joe, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I saw that and I was like, ooh, Fat Joe, back at it. Back at it, man. Like it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, what is going on, guys? I hope you are having oh, a wonderful day. Uh, yep, we got to hear nope. it. <laughs> Good try, though. Uh, oh, leave. Thanks. <laughs> Sometimes you need dad's help, you know. It, it's a technology <laughs> Thanks, channel, Frank. It's a technology <laughs> channel. Let's go. Uh, okay. Uh, I can't just, TJ, let me know if you can't see anything. I got to resize. I can't see it up here. Um, all right, guys. So we are going to take a look at Bitcoin. Now, we are, I, I do want to bring up some stuff. I, I think we're taking, uh, you know, we continue to keep taking steps in the right direction. And uh, we will pull up uh, some things on the Bitcoin chart as well as the DXY and the SPY. I uh, did just want to let, uh, just bring this up. Uh, ETH uh, currently pumping at about uh, 3,032. It was a little higher before, um, but that is always good to see. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and start, uh, not really going to cover the weekly, but we are taking some steps in the right direction on the weekly with the money flow and the VWAP uh, coming up pretty, pretty good on uh, that time frame. Uh, but we're going to start here on the daily, right? Nothing too crazy has happened, uh, you know, in the past day, just still waiting to get, uh, you know, we're, we are on our way up from the bottom of this ascending triangle, which is obviously a step in the right direction. Uh, fighting with this golden pocket. Let me just bring up the hourly to zoom in just a bit. And, you know, yeah, just kind of bouncing around with this golden pocket. Now, this level right here, this white line at 41, uh, 41,950. Now, this was acting as really strong support. Uh, I'm sorry, resistance. And now, you know, once we rejected uh, off of this line here through the golden pocket, it is now acting as strong support, which is another step in the right direction. Uh, now, currently pushing above that golden pocket again. Let's see if we can flip this into support and come test this level here at about 42,950. And then we can start working our way up to the top of that ascending triangle. So now let me just pull up the DXY or the US dollar index here. Now, this is important to keep an eye on. And I just wanted to bring these up, uh, you know, side by side here uh, next to Bitcoin. Because if you go back in time, right, to uh, the weekly on both charts here, and uh, let me just resize a little bit. I here. wish I had a time machine. <laughs> is that a TikTok trend? How does that go? You know the one? I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, it's funny. I watch a lot of TikTok, but I feel like when people bring up trends, I'm seeing completely different trends. I'm on some yeah. weird TikToks, though. You're not on Thought Talk. No, not on Thought Neither Talk. Neither am I. Yeah, yeah. You heard that, Jess. I'm not on Thought oh, gosh, Talk. my wife's back there. <laughs> um, okay, so if you take a look at the DXY here, uh, you know, and you guys can see my cursor here on both charts. Uh, you know, when, when the DXY tops out, it's typically when we see massive runs for Bitcoin. So you can see here, uh, right here as the DXY, um, actually, let me flip this to Bitcoin. Um, so if, if you look here, the top of the DXY right here did mark, uh, you know, 
as we started coming down on the DXY, if you look at the Bitcoin chart, you could see we ran up for the 2017 bull run, right? And then right as we started to recover on the DXY, we started coming down into the bear market, coming to the second top on the DXY right here. And that was the, uh, you know, that is when we started to, let me just resize here a little bit. That is when we started to come up as the DXY came down. That's when we started coming up for the current bull run that we're in, uh, you know, and now we are coming up to some major resistance here at 99,130 here for the DXY. Now the question is, are we gonna put this lower high in and is this uh, DXY gonna top out here? Or uh, you know, if you just draw a trend line across both of these tops on the DXY, uh, you know, you will come to about here. So the question is, are we going to top out here for the DXY? And is it going to come down from here and we can see a run for Bitcoin? Or are we going to break this resistance and come up and test this level up here to put a, to put a higher, uh, a lower high in at this level? Now, if you zoom in a little bit, let me just get rid of this uh, Bitcoin chart and just look at the DXY. Uh, you know, if we zoom in a little bit here, uh, let's go to the one hour. Now, we are playing around on this golden pocket. We got rejected from this area two separate times, and we've now bounced off of the golden pocket two separate times. Uh, we're putting in some lower highs here. So hopefully we can see this get pushed down uh, and not come up to make that uh, you know, higher lower high. Uh, hopefully we could just come down here for some bigger moves, uh, to see some bigger moves for Bitcoin. Uh, it's just kind of what I'm keeping my eye on. And then one more thing I wanted to point out on the SPY is, as you guys know, we are breaking out of this. Uh, we have broken out of this. This downtrend here and if you come to the daily uh, you know it's my line did not pop up here however uh, we are coming up and testing the 200 day moving average on the SPY which is good because uh, you know Bitcoin has been following uh, the the S&P 500 and Bitcoin have been moving together so uh, you know I, I don't see why Bitcoin can't come up and test its 200 day moving average which again my line is not here but it does come up uh, you know right now it is sitting at about 48k so, uh, you know, if we can come up and test and test that 200 day moving average, that would be I mean, we'd really start making I mean, these are some big moves that would have brought us that would bring us out of this ascending triangle and move us up on our way to this golden pocket at about 55K. And that's what we're looking for. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. Looking for some, uh, you know, possible swing shorts at that level. Bing Get about bomb. it. Yeah. <laughs> Got Jimmy Boy dropping the forget about it. He's always there. looking. Uh, Frank's always looking for some swing in action. I like it. I like it. Uh, somebody said, uh, stop harassing Ben. I love him. I, I love you. That's good. Uh, Everdome video is on, uh, Saturday. I'm doing it with the meta money guys. So we got that to look forward to and, uh, got big stuff going on with Everdome. Actually yeah. had, had, I had a call with them this morning. So, uh, they've got some big stuff coming too. So they, uh, invited me to come be part of some big announcement. I wasn't, I'm not able to go unfortunately because i got a ball tournament this weekend big ball tournament 12 teams this weekend a big ball tournament a big ball tournament interesting yeah Hope my, my my 10 year old he's now at the point where uh if i ever say balls like oh you know make sure to pick up the balls or whatever like he goes dad <laughs> so that's pretty funny he's that that's the age my child is at just so y'all so, understand uh, like he hears the word balls and he goes dad so i would say like like father, like son. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. Okay, here we go. Uh, Bitcoin's correlation to S and P five hundred hit seventeen month high. So, it's important to note right here that we are seeing Bitcoin and the S and P five hundred correlated, just as Frankie was mentioning. But the tech to uh, the tech stock specifically, not as connected to. So. Um, here we go. 90-day correlation between top crypto and S&P 500 has risen to its highest level since October of 2020, which is very fascinating because what is October 2020? That is right before the massive action in the bull run. Perennial debate of whether Bitcoin is a gold-like haven asset or a risky investment may heat up as a crypto sensitivity. Stock markets has increased amid concerns that Federal Reserve's aggressive tightening plans may tip the U.S. economy into recession. The 90-day correlation between Bitcoin and Wall Street's benchmark equity index, the S&P 500, rose to 0.49%, the highest since October 2020. Uh, the correlation has only been higher for five days in Bitcoin's history. Wow, that's impressive. Um, uh, the correlation is strengthened alongside a relentless tightening of the U.S. Treasury yield curve, a sign the Fed may have a hard time 
avoiding much feared stagflation with rapid fire interest rate rises without destabilizing the economy. We've been talking about a long time, the long tail problem of inflation versus the short tail uh, problem of cutting or uh, increasing the rates. Uh, the yield curve, uh, blah, 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 is now just 20 basis, basis points short of inversion. So the long held crypto market believe a Bitcoin being a digital haven is yet to come to fruition. And I, you know, is Bitcoin a, a, a hedgeable asset? No. Is it a safe haven? Yes. I, I would argue they're two different things. When you're trying to hedge, what you're trying to do is, is keep, your, keep your value in line with where it currently is in light of a uh, destabilizing economy. Okay, that would be hedging. Bitcoin is more like a safe haven because it doesn't matter in the day to, the day, to day whether you're keeping the value. Over the long term, your value is going to increase in Bitcoin dramatically compared to any other thing on the market outside of other cryptos. But in addition to that, when we look at all the stuff going on in Canada, all the stuff going on in Ukraine, all the stuff going on in China, all the stuff going on in, in, in Russia, by the way, Saudis today announcing they were going to accept the yuan, the digital yuan for yeah. oil. I saw an interesting... They, the dual dueling economies. Yeah. I saw a real interesting post that kind of outlined the vote, the UN voting for uh, this conflict in Ukraine. Yeah. And you can pretty much see where the lines are drawn yeah. by who voted pro, you know, as far as for these regulations and, you know, to um, these sanctions on Russia, who voted for it, who voted against it, and mostly the countries who chose abstained from voting. And if you look, there's... Of course, yeah, you know, of course. And India included. India, Brazil, yep. Saudi, you know, a lot of the ones that are basically saying we will still trade with them regardless of what the West does and really lumps the West into more or less Europe, US, Canada. Um, you know, that's pretty much the battle line. So that yeah. was what was interesting to look at. Scary. What's going on right now? I mean, I, I had this thought this morning when I was looking at, at all this stuff going on and I just said to myself, you know, to me... We really, it is possible that right now in this current conflict between Russia and Ukraine and all the after effects that from the beginning of this year, we are now looking at the actual events that are going to lead to the removal of the US dollar as a world reserve currency. And that is a scary, scary proposition if you are an American, because that takes away all of our economic power. And when you really, <clears throat> when you really think about, you know, what, what is, what is a strong military? You know, there's nothing that's stronger for fortifying a country than its economy. You know, so we can have the military, but if we don't have the money to fund the military, then it's not like we have the highest number of people in our military. China's got a lot more people in their well, military. And let's be honest, what's the number one use of our military? Expanding the reach of the dollar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, anyways, long and short of it, uh, you know, I did want to bring all that up and say that, uh, you know, that basically we are seeing this high correlation. Last time we saw it was right before the bull run. Um, you know, Bitcoin has not really proven itself at this point as a hedgeable asset, but it is still, in my opinion, a safe haven and the best investment you can make, especially if you already have a good bit of money. If, if you're starting with small amounts, then, you know, Ethereum, Cardano, XRP, those, those are probably better bets for you. But um, I, I will say this, guys, uh, make sure to smash that like button. Let's go ahead and do us a favor. Stop what you're doing before we move on to the next story. X out of the live chat if you're watching on mobile. Hit the like button, then come back in. If you're watching on a smart TV, bottom left-hand corner of your screen, hit more actions, more options, react, and then like this video. The number one thing you can do as a member of the Bit Squad. Yeah, we now, got 5,000 people here. We should be able to get at least 2,500 likes. Oh, yeah, guys. Easy, easy, easy peasy. Businesses in Florida to be able to pay taxes in crypto. I just made a TikTok about this uh, where I just said, Crypto, obviously a scam. That's why the state of Florida is accepting it for taxes. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's still people out there that do believe that crypto is a scam. It's really ass 9, ass 10, ass 11. Uh, Pro-crypto Florida Governor Ron DeSantis announced a new plan for businesses in the state that would allow paying taxes in digital assets. DeSantis said on Tuesday that numerous businesses want to pay tax in crypto in Florida. State's working on it. Governor DeSantis has been actively defending his pro-crypto stance and has actively modernized the state to make it an emerging hub 
for crypto investment, which has already attracted companies such as blockchain.com to cities like Miami. Back in December, DeSantis proposed a program that will let businesses pay state fees in crypto. So, of course, we have Miami that is the behemoth. Miami and Austin are the, really the two uh, you know, leaders of blockchain you know, for cities in the United States. San Francisco, you know, pro- probably up there as well. Um, in LA, probably in the top five also. But what, what I would say is that um, not actually the, the city itself, but in terms, there are a lot of companies out there. For Miami and Austin, you know, those cities are very bullish on crypto. But now you have the state of Florida kind of backing up Miami. And I think this is a very important story. The wide implementation of digital assets in the state would not have been possible without the support of the mayor of the second biggest city in the state, Francis Suarez, who said he would receive part of his wages in Bitcoin instead of the U.S. dollar. Tampa, the number one city in Florida? Or? It just says the second biggest city in the state. Uh, I mean, there's got to be talking about population. Jacksonville by land mass. Well, of course, know. Jacksonville by land mass, but not that, that's certainly not what it's talking about because Miami is not the second biggest city by land. Miami is actually fairly small, so there's, it's definitely not land. Probably Tampa. It's got to be Tampa, right? I would think so. Uh, Tampa's a really growing, growing place right now. Yes, yeah, so. where are the... That's one of the lists that BlackRock is buying up like crazy. Yep, exactly. Real Absolutely. Estate. A lot of people looking at Tampa. for. A There's a real time. estate show about Tampa right now, I think, on Netflix. So, uh, As the uh, mayor previously stated, he's worried about the ability of one central authority to ah, seize and control an asset. So it is, it's Jacksonville. Population-wise? Population-wise. Wow. Almost double the size of Miami. Really? I'm really surprised by that to be honest i'm really shocked tampa it is jacksonville okay number three a little behind miami i guess it just is like when you have that much land i guess you know i think it's a big metro area the whole north side of the state kind of so what's that jacksonville is just so huge everything orlando is relatively close you know yeah so jacksonville has basically miami and tampa and orlando combined sheesh yeah not exactly, approximately. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's impressive. That's impressive. I didn't realize Jacksonville was that big population-wise. And at one point, Jacksonville was where there was the most Bitcoin miners. Really? Yeah. Or I don't know now about it's now. That was back in like 2017 or 18. Yeah. So you heard back from uh, CleanSpark. We're going to be visiting their facility. Oh, um, awesome. Biggest, you know, part of the number one state in the United States in crypto mining and Bitcoin mining, Georgia. Mm. Uh, we're going to be visiting there in uh, June, I think, is when we're going to be doing oh, apparently that. Apparently, so. a lot of military there, people are saying. That tr- military in Jacksonville. Okay. I mean, you know, you, you are right when you do talk about there really isn't anything up there. Like, in, on the north side of, on the northeast side, I mean, basically, you've got Jacksonville, and then, you know, you start getting down into, uh, you know, uh, what, what is below that? Fort Canaveral is pretty far below that. So, I don't know. Daytona, relative, was well, like an hour and a half maybe from Jacksonville, if I remember, maybe two hours. I guess. And then I was really up there, I guess. So, okay. Uh, Crypto.com unveiled as FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 official sponsor. I did not know the World Cup was this summer. Oh, wow. And I will tell you, I think this thing's going to be a gigantic disaster. Uh, Qatar, the, the whole Qatar thing, did you hear like all that stuff when they were like, Although they were taking all of those like almost slave labor from other countries to come build all those stadiums and like people were just dying left and right, like building the stuff there. No, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, it's, it was really, really bad. It's a few years ago they were talking about. It. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with uh, the World Cup in general. But crypto.com. Hey, we love crypto.com. Uh, we were at one point a crypto.com ambassador. We ended that relationship because we don't do sponsored, uh, you know, partnerships or anything like that anymore here on the channel. But um, you know, we definitely support crypto.com. It's a great company. We love CRO. Uh, the marriage of sports and crypto has given birth to interesting partnerships in the last 24 months. Crypto.com is taking things up a notch by becoming an official partner in what is seen as the greatest sports event in the world. It's up for debate uh, if you live in America. On March 22nd, FIFA announced, but I do watch the World Cup. Uh, are, are we in the World Cup this year? I have no idea. Let's see. We didn't make the last one. Yeah, the men. Yeah. I guess. Have they even done the qualifiers yet? Uh, no, we have not qualified yet, but we are still. I, I think we'll probably qualify this time. I think we're actually relatively decent this year compared to previous iterations, but we'll see what happens. Uh, according to FIFA, God, the year we lost to Belgium, man, in the, in the, I guess it was the 
round of 16. We had a good shot that year, I felt like. But. Yeah, Brian's a big World Cup guy. Is he? I, I love watching the World Cup. I really do love watching the World Cup. Um, that's the one time outside of watching the Atlanta United I, I will watch soccer. So, Partnership will be mutually beneficial to all parties. There's no bigger platform with greater reach and cultural impact than FIFA. You know, when you compare the Super Bowl to the World Cup, it really is so different because this is more like March Madness every four years. You know, because there's a giant tournament, a lot of teams involved. Mm-hmm. Super Bowl is one event. I'd be interested to see the, the Super Bowl ratings versus the World Cup final ratings. Because I, I would think the World Cup final, I, I don't know how it would do. Because, like, if your team's eliminated, do you care that much? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe so. Maybe if you're into soccer, you love it. Well, and rating, TV ratings can be a little wonky, too, because they're going to be doing the Super Bowl ratings you're going to see. That's all U.S.-based. Yeah, so that's not taking anything to into account outside of the U.S. Usually, unless it's streaming, or World Cup. Obviously, that's being watched pretty much everywhere in the world. Most of those finals. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Mexico versus USA tomorrow for qualifiers. But that's big because we're tied with them behind Canada. Canada is beating us this year Oof. in soccer. Oof. Maybe curling. I get it, but yeah. Um, Crypto.com is in ripples of excitement across the industry when it's sponsored the LA Stable Center. It's now Crypto.com Arena. Yada, yada, yada. So pretty cool stuff. That's, uh, you know, cool stuff for Crypto.com. According, just real quick, it, uh, Super Bowl pales in comparison to the finals. $140 million on the Super Bowl, like five thirty, five sixty, five seventeen. dollars 17 Jeez. on the World Cup finals. Wow. Yeah. I, again, mean, I guess there's just a lot of people in the world. Yeah. That's and all those people in the world don't care about American football. Which is uh, much better in soccer. I'm sorry, it just is. UCL finals. What are the U- What's the UCL? Uh, I don't know. The United Cricket League. What is UCL? I don't even know what that is. Interesting. Uh, A billion people turn in for the 2018 final. Was that the horrible one where uh, was it Brazil won like eight to one or something like that over Germany? It's just the same countries every year in there. It was nice to see, I think, who was it? Like maybe Switzerland was in the finals a couple of years ago, or maybe they were in the quarterfinals. It's good to not see the same people in there every year. Brazil. I don't want to see Brazil or Germany or France win. I'm sorry. It's just the Champions League, I guess. Champions League. Okay. Okay. So Champions League, soccer is so crazy. It's like yeah. they take all the winners from the regionalized leagues, and then they move them into their own league, and then right. they play a tournament or something. I Y'all see, y'all see where I land with soccer. But I do know this, Lanny United, Major League Soccer champs a few years ago. GameStop NFT Marketplace beta launches on Loopring. So that must be why Loopring is moving forward. Or why it's pumping. NFT Marketplace caused quite a stir in the crypto community over the months. Um, Has finally confirmed we'll be using Loopring Layer 2. Uh, going with a tagline, power to the players. Wasn't that the Nintendo power tagline back in the day? Collaboration, will see the NFT marketplace. So the popular game retailer use Loopring's L2 non-custodial decks. So pretty good stuff. We got, uh, uh, this is a major step for GameStop. GameStop's got to be closing all its physical stores in the next two or three years, right? Yeah. Wouldn't you think so? Absolutely. It's so funny. Oh, huh, it's so funny. We don't know anything about soccer. It's hilarious. <laughs> that's what a cool comment that is. So funny we don't know about soccer in America. <laughs> Check that, this out. That, those might be one of your better impressions. Did you like that one? Yeah. Yeah, it was <laughs> a good one, wasn't it? Okay. I, I should have made the impression British, probably. Well, well, then it, then it would have lost its whole effect. It would nobody have. would know what was going on. Yeah, you're right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, crypto migrant. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make fun of you. <laughs> All right, uh, GameStop NFT change the game. Now, check this out. So, you see this? You see yeah. the screen? Yep. Come down here, see an Ethereum logo, GameStop, NFT. Ethereum, put this in here. Wow, power to the players, power to the creators. Or go, but watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Do you see the top of the screen up here? You can see this? You see where uh, my cursor is? Yes. There's a little dot up here. Okay. You hit this dot. <laughs> of course, it doesn't work now. Look, it's a game. Oh. Yeah. Cameo A on. Let's see. Here we go. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's oh, go. Game on. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Oh, oh, what happened? What happened? That didn't. That didn't work right. You didn't jump. There you go. Well, when I got the screen big, it moves it down. Oh God. Here we go. Here we go. Boom. Boom. 
Boom. Boom. Boom. I don't do a full jump every time. You're going to have to come down. There you go. Oh. There you go. Nice. Oh, God. Is that a rocket? I'm jumping over a satellite? We're going to the moon. Oh, my God. Oh! I almost died that time. Dude, this is pretty. Y'all see, I'm a gamer. Two hours later. Gamer. Does it get harder? I, it must. That's what she said. <laughs> ah! Look at this. Right. Boom, oh. boom. I, I mean, we I'm can do this, beat this game, I think. Yeah. Oh. I threw it. I yeah. threw it, guys. I threw it. For the show. We got to keep it moving. For the show. I mean, I would have made it, obviously. Really? Uh, Marvel NFT partner VV closes its marketplace yeah. after an in app. Token exploit. Twitter users have complained that the exploit has resulted in a sharp decline in the price of their digital collectibles over the week. VV, and of course, you guys know Ecomi uh, owns VV, a non fungible token marketplace with licensed digital collectibles faced an exploit on Tuesday, resulting in millions of gems or in app tokens being acquired illegally. The platform is quite popular among mainstream brands such as Marvel, Pixar, and Coke. Um, they've chosen VV as their official launch partner. An official tweet published on Wednesday, they acknowledge the exploit on its platform, said that the attackers managed to acquire a large amount of gems illegitimately. Uh, you guys can see here, uh, as a result of the exploit, they closed the market. Gem purchases and transfer while they investigate. So this was yesterday. Um, gems are the VV in-app token. Early reports suggest the exploiters behind the attack managed to mint millions of gems without having to pay for it by exploiting a bug in buying mechanism. One user wrote that their friend accidentally purchased gems using an expired credit card and the transaction went through. Yeah, I, it probably went through initially, but I think probably they reversed it, I would say. That's usually what happens. Because I don't think that, that doesn't seem to have anything to do with the, the exploit, I wouldn't think. That's not the exploit. Yeah, that, that, that these people were exploiting a bug. Somebody just used an expired credit. This sounded like, yeah, well, you know, my friend one time threw a football over a mountain. You know, I really did throw a football over a mountain. Just a small mountain. And I could have really been something if Coach would have put me in the game, you know. Platform has also restricted several user accounts that reportedly tried buying cheap gems from fraudulent accounts. Uh, Twitter user shared timeline of the exploit. So you guys can get more access on that. I mean, here, here's the thing, guys. I, I'm not. You know, this is first mover stuff. You know what I mean? This is first mover stuff right here. This is what you see um, when, uh, you know, you, you're in a cutting edge environment. You see these exploits. We've seen it on DeFi protocols. You know, we, we've seen it all in NFT platforms. We've seen it all across the board. These are things that happen. So you do have to be careful out there. Um, but this doesn't mean that VV is done or that, you know, there is a, uh, you know, th there's a fatal flaw. It just means they had a hiccup here and it sucks for them, but it is what it is. Here's a VV website you guys can see here. Uh, Night Nurse. What is this? I don't know. Have you ever... Isn't there like a movie or something? I don't know. I don't follow Night Nurse the, the uh, movie? The I don't know. Has anybody seen Night Nurse the movie? No. Uh, virtual showrooms. Buy and sell with others. There's a mansion in the sky. Here's just a, just a VV website here. It's a pretty nice website. See, they work with Ghostbusters, Powerpuff Girls. I want to be the prettiest girl at the party. Was that a good Powerpuff Girls impression? <laughs> I don't think so. That was, uh, that's one of the Powerpuff Girls imitating one of the other Powerpuff Girls. Oh. Uh, it's a TikTok trend. That's how I know what it is. Gotcha. Uh, did you used to watch Powerpuff Girls? Uh, no. Yeah, but I, I know what it is. Like, I've seen yeah, of clips course. of it or whatever. Yeah, it was popular back when I was. I was that was a Disney, Disney Channel thing, or was it a Cartoon, uh, Cartoon Network? Network yeah, I it believe. was popular back of you know Dexter's Laboratory, Powerpuff Girls, that kind of thing. I was yeah. a Dexter's Laboratory guy. Oh, you were? Yeah, yeah. I'm not went into that either. What uh, was your go-to Cartoon Network? Uh, you know, Cartoon Network really started getting popular uh, after I was not really watching cartoons. Yeah, that's kind of. I go back my my cartoons. I grew up watching. Uh, Obviously, uh, I grew up watching, uh, you know, m my younger years. Uh, He-Man was really popular back in the 80s. 
uh, Smurfs was really popular, but kind of like as I was, you know, like an older kid, like I was watching DuckTales. DuckTales was always Duck my Tales. favorite. Yeah. I love DuckTales. Can't beat DuckTales. You can't. Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Uh, yeah. You know, I'd go down to my great grandma's house and watch Scooby Doo every day. Scooby Doo <laughs> just classic. You couldn't, yeah. can't ever go wrong with Scooby Doo for sure. So, for sure. Um, okay. Uh, GATA Lawn says, Ben, I began watching your channel. Can you scroll up a little bit? Uh, no, I can't. Oh, you can't. I can't really see what you, uh, maybe like, is this scrolling? Yep. Yep. Scroll up, scroll up. I'll tell you when scroll up, 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 right there. Uh, this is from GATA Lawn. That's Georgia Southern. I uh, began watching over a year ago, not knowing much. I'm so educated because of this channel. Thank you for all the hard work changing our lives. I appreciate that. We love getting comments like that. That's what we want to do. We want to change people's lives here on the channel. So good, good, good to hear we're making that impact. Here we go. We got uh, Google Goes Ape, Snoop Dogg, Google Ventures, and Samsung joined $450 million uh, seed funding round for Yuga Labs, the Web3 firm behind Board Ape Yacht Club. Man, we should have put some money in that. Dang. Yuga Labs has closed. Uh, is it the World Cup is this winter? We're going to do it in the winter this year? That's interesting. That's interesting. Very interesting. Um, $450 million seed funding round led by A16Z Crypto, which is, you know who that is? I uh, should. You should. Yeah, yeah, you should. I, we've covered it so many times. but uh, uh, Andreessen Horowitz. Yeah, there it is. Yuga Labs is a Web3. I just like to flex on you sometimes. Uh, Yuga Labs is a Web3 platform behind the popular... NFT series, Board Ape Yacht Club, a collection of 10,000 Board Ape NFTs. Last week, Universal Music Group's Web3 label bought a Board Ape for 350 k uh, We will be including all of our NFTs in our portfolio video this weekend, so excited about that. We're actually filming it later today. Uh, funding round values, you collapse at $4 billion. Jeez, <sighs> that's how much I need to buy the Falcons. That's, a, that's insane. Uh, it, it will be much more than that. Like, the, the actual valuation of this company... Bro, I can't even. Round is seen participation from top tier studios like Animoca Brands and subsidiary Sandbox. We've got a big video on Animoca Brands coming next weekend, so make sure to watch out for that. Uh, let's see here. Um, Snoop Dogg Timbaland. Who doesn't love Timbaland? I love, anybody remember Timbaland and Magoo? Anybody remember that? Anybody remember that uh, album they had back in the day? Timbo and Maganu. Three Lao, Steve Aoki, and Gunna, as well as tech giant Samsung. Uh, where, did, where does it talk about Google? A lot of the people. Oh, well, Google Ventures joined it. That's why. Google yeah, Ventures. well, and a lot of the staff of Yuga yeah. Labs are ex-Facebook, Google, you know, <laughs> high-level people from big tech companies. I mean, how is this? How is this? Um, <laughs> sexy calling guy. Yeah, that was kind of the point. That's kind of the point. Um, uh, you know, it's kind of like this thing. How do you think the metaverse is going to do? Their metaverse. Yeah, you know, Jay Chains is all in on it. He, he says he thinks it's going to crush everything. Yeah. I think, think it, it, let me tell you how I kind of see it going. Okay. R real quick. Just to give you preference for how I feel. Sure. I kind of feel like what we're going to see is all of the NFT, Board 8, all the people that are in those projects flock into that metaverse. People are interested in those, but I, I think that is kind of a niche group, don't you? Yes and no. Like, yes, it's a niche group because they're high priced. You know, they're very valuable yeah. things, but it's also the core of the community because Bored Apes and CryptoPunks didn't have high mint prices necessarily. Right. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. were the people that were early in NFTs. They definitely nailed community. So I think they, I, I see it being very, very big because it, the, from what I understand of it, it's an open design. It will immediately integrate the largest and most fervent NFT projects, but it's also designed to make other projects very easily integratable into their metaverse so people can build, like, say, for Pluto Alliance, for example, yeah. they could, we could port all our aliens in there, and if you want to run around as a board ape with some features, you can, or you could run around with an alien, and people yeah. can buy and sell and trade. It it's very easy to mint items within the game. They're going to, you know, from what I understand, they've done a very good job with design. And I think just from a pure understanding of the problems and needs in the space, I think they're going to crush it. Now, yeah. what happens with competition, what happens after that, who knows? But I do think they understand both the technology 
and the community better than anybody. And that's a really good place to start. Let, let me tell you the wild card here. Sure. ApeCoin. Yeah, for sure. That's the wild card. Big wild card. That's the wild card. How, how is that community, people that are buying ApeCoin, how are, how are they going to integrate them into the metaverse? Because that is a really, that's really strong because that's not, you know, I mean, ApeCoin's 13 bucks today. It's not $300,000 for, for a board ape. So you do have a lower, you know, kind of a bar for who can get into that metaverse and, and, and maybe, I th- uh, you know, ha- have a stake in it. I think ultimately the ape coin will be, which is one of the missing pieces with NFTs, liquidity, you know, yeah. in and out. Because yeah, yeah. a yeah. lot of the people that got rich with bored apes and crypto punks, they had a really valuable NFT, but if they sold it, <clears throat> then they wouldn't have it anymore. Now you've got a way to take some profits and benefit from being part of the community without having to exit the community. So I think it's it'll be interesting to see how it unfolds. We got two good super, or two good regular chats here. We got Chris Pearson. Ben's doing good not being able to see himself. I'm proud. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. And then we got Dan Unt here says Ben that. is like, okay, okay, TJ, hurry up. Yeah. Sorry I asked that question. Yeah. Is Ape the next Doge? Absolutely not. No. Uh, Dogecoin and ApeCoin are nothing alike. Exactly. Uh, nothing alike. And someone also asked me, who my super, my favorite uh, Mortal Kombat character is. I'm a Sub Zero guy for yeah. sure. I'm I only play as Sub Zero. Have ever since the first one. What about you? Who's your favorite character? I like Sub Zero too. Oh, I mean, well, no you know, I, I, not, he's not one surprising. of the most popular characters. But you know, a lot of times if the other person's playing Sub Zero, I would play Scorpion just for fun. Joshua Watson Miller with a super chat. Ben, I want to pitch you and your team my metaverse idea. Yeah, uh, you go to the Meta Money channel and uh, make a comment there, and they, they might be able to respond to you. Yeah. There are metaverse folks. All right, let's go ahead and move on here to uh, XRP Army and vote. If you're in the XRP Army, Let make it sure to smash the like button. And I will tell you guys this. I know I've been teasing this a little bit about, uh, you know, some stuff that's uh, going on with NFTs with us and the XRP world. Uh, we are looking into something right now that if we can make this happen, it would be the most incredible event in the history of crypto. That's all I'm going to say. Trying to make it happen. It will be like nothing anyone has ever been able to come close to. The capabilities were not even there. So uh, really excited about the XRP uh, stuff that we've got going on. Can't wait to tell you more about it. Justin Williams is out this week. He had a baby. He'll be back on Monday. Uh, Starting next week, we'll probably be able to have some more details on that. And guys, throw the X up. If you're in the XRP army, make sure to do that. Very interesting uh, poll we put up yesterday. Yeah. Wasn't it yesterday we did it? The Uh, XRP versus Cardano? It was 51% XRP versus 49% ADA. Where'd you put it? Twitter? Oh, were you not here for that? No. Oh, it must have been Monday. Yeah. It must have been Monday when we put it up. Uh, J Chains put it up. We asked the community which one they would choose, and it was 51% XRP, 49% ADA. Really? Yeah, pretty fascinating. It is. All right, here we go. Um, XRP Army, here we got this tweet here. New Ripple Partner, Q, uh, QNB, mentions the Ripple Partnership and the new corridor open between QNB Qatar and QNB Finns Bank. I've told you guys that uh, for a long time, Middle East is a place where you will be able to look for a lot of moves for XRP. Uh, we've got the bank, uh, the QMB, saying it, it has plans to expand further to key remittance corridors in the future. They launched a cross-border remittance payment service uh, in partnership with Ripple. And you guys also may remember a company, Linkdo, that uh, does that they sell Ripple shares. It's a little confusing if you're not in the institutional world or, you know, the professional trading world. Uh, but I actually have a call with them today. So we'll be talking to some of those people from Linkto today to see what's going on with uh, some synergy maybe between us and them. Uh, Ripple already has a significant presence in the Middle East and MENA, which is North Africa, uh, the Mediterranean, uh, is that... <sighs> What is the East? Oh, the Middle East and North Africa. That's what it stands for. It's literally right here, Middle East, North Africa. Which remains home to two of the top three remittance corridors in the world. A lot of those people going to other places and working and sending money back home. That's basically what that is. Latter part of 2021, Ripple announced the launch of RippleNet's first ever ODL deployment in the Middle East together with Pipple, an international uh, blockchain-based uh, financial services technology company in the Middle East and uh, Africa. Not to be confused with Pippa, a girl that works as an ophthalmologist in Montreal. Uh, also, in the past year, 
Uh, Ripple announced its first in-market ODL corridor in Japan uh, in partnership with SBI Remit and acquired a 40% stake in Tranglo in Malaysia. We talked about Tranglo again the other day. We've got cross-chain transfers of XRP and other assets now available on the XRPL. XRPL, I'm telling you guys, this is something to watch the XRP ledger. Um, let's see here. We got some more Ripple news. Ripple under siege is 63 central banks collaborate on new payment system market. Guys, this is not a big deal. Uh, Ripple faces new threat as central banks create to work pro, uh, working prototypes of a rival cross-border uh, payment system. The Bank for International... Guys, you have to understand how much overlap there is between all of these people, between all of these banks and Ripple. Mm-hmm. Ripple works with the banks. They work with Santander. They work with a lot of these major banks. Uh, so when you see all of these, you know, trying to make a replacement and, you know, yada, 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 they all work together. It's the same thing we talked about yesterday when you have, um, yeah, we do recommend TaxBit or Zen Ledger, by the way, for taxes. But yesterday we were talking about um, <sighs> Vanguard and BlackRock, how they basically own everything in the world. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is kind of the same thing. You, all the people that are behind all these things, they're trying to create different competitors to SWIFT, but they're all the same people. So... Once again, uh, you know, illusion of choice here. Uh, Project Dunbar is what they're calling it. So I, I'm not, don't want to give this story like too much, um, you know, credence. Uh, it's an international settlement it's using multiple CD, CBDCs. We don't even have multiple CBDCs going on right now. So I, I don't think this is really a big deal. Not something to watch. So here we go. Moving into uh, quick hits here. Animoga Brands targeting social media giants and the latest Web3 expansion plans. Like I said we'll have a video next week on Animoga Brands. Chip giant Qualcomm launching a $100 million metaverse fund. Fidelity launching Bitcoin tracker stocks, you know, around the heels of Goldman Sachs doing an OTC deal. Japanese crypto exchange Coincheck buying U.S. listing in a $1.25 billion SPAC deal trying to move into our stock market. Figure sets out plans to launch crypto-backed mortgages, so that's pretty interesting. Be something we could look into in the future. Thailand SEC bans crypto payments, seeks disclosure of system failure from exchanges. Coinbase's cloud is committed to supporting the Avalanche ecosystem. Coinbase cloud, that's them trying to become a FANG stock. Uh, FANG stocks are tech stocks, if you didn't know, so that is what they are trying to become. Most of them make their money on things outside, or they all make their money on things outside of what you think they do. They make, uh, wh- how do you describe that, TJ? Um, like Amazon makes all their money on Amazon Web Services. Yeah, know. I don't know what the phrase with that for that would be. Um, you know, it's Maybe. services, but I, you're talking about- They all about- make money with clouds, yeah. basically. That's just, how they make their money. You're talking about a phrase for companies that make money in a way that you wouldn't necessarily naturally Like what notice. FANG stocks technically are. Like all the FANG stocks, none of them actually make the money on their main products. Right. Amazon doesn't make money selling you retail items. No. Facebook doesn't make money by you using its social media. Right. Um, you know, uh, Apple doesn't make its money on selling iPhones. It actually makes a lot of money on AirPods. Right. AirPods is a huge chunk of Apple's business, but... Mm-hmm. Um, they all make money kind of on the back end with the way that they, with data, yeah. you know, all monetizing data. So yep. when we post portfolio, that's coming out this weekend, guys, yes. for sure. Come dev- it, it took us a while because our portfolio is quite different than it used to be because it's now we've got real estate. We've got a lot of, we have NFTs. It's not just looking at our coin stats tracker anymore. So we want to do all that. So yep. wondering if you know about Purple Recovery and Gwinnett, family members going there for six months. I've heard good things about it. So I have, I have heard of Purple for sure. Okay. Yep. Let's, let's do it here. Ready for some questions? Yep. All right. This will be interesting because uh, I can't see this once I show it to you. So yep. I'm going to read it off. Uh, first question was uh, from the basement. Any more trade challenges in the future? I saw this question yesterday. Yeah, I saw we, it yesterday too. Frank and I did talk about this. We're actually going to be putting something together. Like he's referring to, we used to do, you know, a thousand to ten thousand dollar challenge. We're probably yeah. going to be doing that on the Frankie Candles channel coming soon. Uh, next and question. we can and we can show like he can show that on this channel too. Yeah, absolutely. We can yeah. do the updates when he comes on on yeah. the live stream. So That's smart. Uh, we're building that out. Uh, it'll be in his Discord, all that sort of stuff. Uh, next question, Ben. I've been hearing a lot about a lot of Algorand hype lately. Project is solid. Parentheses needs more marketing, but it's so boring. What are your thoughts? I agree, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. I mean, that's 
DJ and I almost came to blows over that last year, I think, <laughs> at some point, talking about algorithm. Well, yeah, I, yeah. Because that's exactly what I said. The marketing yeah, is boring, and so that boring. holds it back, I think. Yeah. And then in a similar note, uh, Aaron Cruz asking, what are your thoughts on HBAR NFTs? I haven't heard anything about it. I haven't either, thoughts? actually. Any, anything that's NFTs, though, we're interested in. Yeah. Uh, that'll become very clear to you guys in three or four months, maybe, why that is. But uh, Dad knows Question, can we get a staking slash yield farm video similar to the portfolio video? What are y'all staking? What do you, you know, what are the returns, et cetera? Are we going to do all that at once? Well, we're definitely going to talk about our nodes on that video. Yeah. And we're going to talk about our Celsius on that video as well. Um, but I don't know if a full dedicated video for that will do very well. So basically, just so you guys know a little bit about the direction of this channel. Um, you know, we launched that Federate hike video last week and it was an incredible video and basically uh nobody watched it because we put out so many videos on a daily basis uh we're going to be doing two pre-recorded videos that will be coming out saturday and sunday nights at seven o'clock so we're only going to have two videos a week that's 104 videos over a year that we're going to be able to put out so we got to be very careful about how we do those and making sure that they're offering the most possible bang for our buck in making the videos and bang for your buck in watching the videos. So um, could th that sounds like stuff more that we should do, be doing in the academy, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Yeah, I agree. Uh, also, yeah. somebody in the super chat says, Japan just added Bitcoin to a list of 18 certified green cryptos, which... Isn't the logo orange? What? The logo's orange, though. Yeah. Bitcoin I, Cash is green. I get it. Yeah, Orange, you glad I made that joke? I sure am. Uh, Stormbreaker said, any reason to use a crypto IRA service? Maybe if you're trying to avoid a tax yeah. hit on capital gains and you do some swing trading. I know we've got some people. He, Brian actually has a crypto IRA. Oh, does he? That he does some stuff in. Uh, so, yeah, there's something is to it. Is it through uh, that I trust? Yep. It is. Y'all <clears throat> yeah. know I don't like them. Uh, it's personal, but, uh, I, they've been doing commercials on TV. Yeah. And every time that. I talk about him, their founder comes in and is like, Oh, thanks for giving us publicity. <laughs> yeah. He's a uh, dork. So another question, uh, Shane Smith, Ben, have you ever listened to Tom McDonald? I text him regularly. <laughs> yeah. We love Me and Tom are friends. I love Tom. I love Tom McDonald. I've loved Tom McDonald for a really long time. Uh, Q and A. I found myself learning more about NFTs and nodes rather than individual tokens. Do you think nodes and NFTs will be more of a push for the next market? I think nodes are always going to be niched. Yeah, I, NFTs are mainstream. Nodes are niched. That's yeah. and, and that goes back to our fourth philosophy. Um, you know, our, our, our fourth philosophy for our Bitboy Crypto investing philosophies is become a crypto expert. And what that means is find a niche in crypto and go all in on that and learn everything you can about it. Yield farming, staking, nodes, that's an area where you can become an expert and you can maximize, make a lot of money doing that stuff if you do it right, but it can also be like a full-time job. And then last question, any thoughts on Arweave? AR Weave. That is uh, augmented reality. Reality. I can't remember their angle, to be honest with you, but um, it, it is one that we've covered before. We've talked a lot uh, about on the, uh, on the show. Um, I, I do like our weave as a project. I, I think it is, it does have some staying powers, but I, I honestly can't remember exactly what they're doing. I mean, you know, these projects get lost on me sometimes. Yeah, there's a lot of them. All right. Well, that's all the questions we have for today. I love it. People are talking about Kava Mooning, good for Kava. I haven't looked into it in a long time. A Ben and Tom McDonald mixtape. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> all right, guys. That's all I got. Be blessed. Good boy out.